Coming up, we take a look at the best five-man lineups for the Brooklyn Nets, maybe even some four-man combinations, the on-off net ratings for this team that tells a tale of a season that seems to be heading in the right direction and certainly has more quality combinations to uncover. We break it all down next. You are Locked On Nets, your daily Brooklyn Nets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ah, yes, friends. It is the Locked On Nets podcast right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team, the Brooklyn Nets, every single day. Over there, you're going to find Doug Norrie, owner-operator of DFSR. For all your daily fantasy sports rankings from DraftKings to FanDuel, he's got you covered. I'm Adam Arbrick, breaking down the New York football giants on the One Giant Podcast with my boy, Andy Mack. We thank you for making us your first listen today, free on all those great platforms. And Doug... Let's keep cracking down on some of these off-day narratives. We talked a little bit yesterday, obviously, about John Collins. There's this buzz around the December 15th when players become available. But sometimes the best thing that you can examine is what you already have in-house and the best combinations that Brooklyn's been putting on the floor this season. Yeah, you know, it, it's interesting where the Nets are right now because on the one hand, you know, you really like where uh, the season has been going of late. It's a, sort of a longer layoff this week, which is good for the team. They had piled on a lot of minutes and they kind of needed it. And then you mentioned off air, and I think you're, it's correct because we're going to get into it. It's almost like we haven't even gotten to the point where we can uncover, you know, all the different combinations yet. And I think that's actually a great place to be too. I will get into some of these Lineup combination is going to have you guess at what you think ours I, you know, expressly stated for you not to look at what the best lineup combinations were. So we're going to you're going to give it the college try. Um, <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to trust you didn't look. But um, but just before that, I, I will say. Right, like I I, I I get the feeling that whatever this is or and I know what it is, but what, what these all what these numbers end up being. The Nets have so many different variations now. If guys can stay healthy, that this could actually look different. And that's exactly where you want to be because you can start really mixing and matching some of the pieces they have. Yeah, said at the top, a little bit of, you know, uncovering what can still be the best combinations going forward. And the funny thing about it is, for as good as it's been of late for them, and we, we talked about this last episode, stabilizing and just being all about basketball and nothing else, which is a wonderful thing, covering the team or being a fan of the team. But remember, over the course of the start of this season, you've had what? A Kyrie Irving suspension misses seven, eight games. You have Ben Simmons just starting out all time terrible in his Nets career. And then also has a couple of injury stints. Joe Harris, Seth Curry coming off of injuries. They don't look quite like themselves to start. Then you've got TJ Warren, who now we're excited seeing the sample size we're getting, but he wasn't around. Edmund Sumner, a part of it, not. Yuta Watanabe, breakout player for the Nets, misses a handful of time on the injury list. So even though... The team is having success right now, and you can kind of look and see where some of the pockets are, are definitely the right combinations, great three, four, five-man units that they're starting to develop. There are certain factors that are probably going to, I would assume, as, I, as we get into the guessing game, I assume are going to impact how good some combinations look from a net rating standpoint. And there's still combinations that haven't been uncovered yet. We won't probably see for another three, four weeks even maybe. Well, in classic net style, so far this season, according to NBA stats, uh, right now they have 301 different five-man combinations that have already that have played you know more than one second together <laughs> this season. I the only way to sort this is to just click on every team. I just went through it by clicking teams that I knew dealt with a lot of injuries, and really only the Lakers were close. I like every other team is in the 200s on this one. So it's just so funny about a net season. It can't go any other way with this team where it's just like a 5 million combinations. We never, you know, last year, if you think about it, we went into the playoffs with a five man starting group that had never played together at all in the regular season. So par for the course in terms of all the different combinations and styles that the nets run. Although I will say, as we said at the top, this season seems significantly more stable, which I can't even believe I'm saying of late, like over the last couple of weeks, <laughs> like more stable than we have seen the in the past. Like eight, nine games. Yeah. Well, sometimes when you deal with a team like the Nets, being normal is what feels like a huge win. Like just, just be normal, <laughs> just be normal for a couple of weeks. And that feels like a W. Okay. Before we get into some of these, some of these groupings, do you have, and by the way, just a few filters on this. Uh, like we, I said, there's 301 different lineups uh, that the Nets ha have run. We tried to narrow it down by guys and minutes and combinations that have actually played together 
for a decent amount. So you had to have played for the five man groups. You had to have played more than uh, 20 minutes, uh, which is not that much. And then for the four man group, you have to play basically more than a hundred minutes like um, that as we're getting into like real sample, the uh, understanding the 20 minute is not a huge is clearly, clearly, clearly not a huge sample size. But when you deal with a team like the Nets, five man groups, don't come in huge sample sizes because of all the turnover <laughs> that they've had from guys like, you know, Kyrie out for long stretches, Simmons out for long stretches, Warren not being on the team and not playing some minutes, you know, guys like Patty Mills playing to start the year and then being well, buried. Left him out. Yeah. You know, like Yuta Watanabe not playing and then playing a lot, you know, decently playing a lot and then being injured. Like the Nets have had a lot of stuff of sort of key contributors that um, have ended up moving in and out of the lineup. So while 20 minutes is not, is clearly not a lot. I, I do think the four mans are going to be a little closer to where we are, but let's say we're, we can start with four man or five man, where you think some of the groups that you think just by, you know, the old eye test have been among the best performing groups on both ends of the court for the Nets this season. Yeah. So I want to make sure that I put this together the right way. All I wrote down is I referenced my paper. If you're watching on YouTube, it's just so I had the names in front of me. And I don't find myself just scrambling to remember who I want to put into these. Yep. Um, we can build this up to a five man lineup. I be because I think, I'm taking into account the way Ben started out the season. So this will probably build to a five man. Yep. Katie, Kyrie, Claxton, O'Neal, who played a lot early. And then my real question is whether or not I want to put Joe Harris in there or Seth Curry. And Joe Harris is historically, by the way, like he doesn't always trend great on net ratings. I know this from like past seasons where his his, you know, plus minus is usually not reflective of what you think his value probably is. I'll go with I'll go with Curry as the fifth man in, in that five-man lineup. I think it's a mistake. So though. close, buddy. So ah, close. It was Harris, I meant. I said. <laughs> it was Harris, yeah. should have gone so with my boy. The, I should have gone with my boy. So I'll, I'll break this into two groups. So there is the smaller sample size, and there's a larger sample size five-man group. The best larger sample size five-man group, and, and you were close because the, the the smaller one did actually include Curry, um, but you were wrong with one guy. You, you were wrong with another guy there. So the best larger sample size five-man unit that the Nets have right now is Kevin Dur and this is more than 100 minutes, right. is Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, Joe Harris, Royce O'Neal, Nick Claxton. You were smart by – because I think people are going to forget to have to back out the Simmons minutes from earlier yeah. in the season when it was just real. It was pretty darn rough, um, and especially with the you know plus minus and all that stuff. But that group is – uh, is a really, really strong group. 104 offensive rating, which isn't amazing, but the defensive rating at 94 is uh, is stellar. And so that is the best five-man group among the smaller, the larger-ish. I mean, I'm putting large in, in quotes here, but larger sample size. The smaller one, which is only right, right at the 20-minute limit, is Durant, uh, Curry, Harris. So two shooters, Royce O'Neal right. and Ben Simmons, which is interesting because no Kyrie in that one. And that's one where I, over probably a 20-minute stretch, they just shot lights out. I'm trying to think of like right. what game that was. It was definitely when Kyrie was out and it was like Simmons and shooters. And again, I think we can dream on those lineups too. But it is interesting that those lineups don't have – a t this is a good thing for the Nets. There's not, there's multiple guys not overlapping in those lineups, <laughs> which speaks to the idea that there are, there can be di there. This line, once they're rolling, I do think the Nets have interchangeability here that is really good, <laughs> right? And I think that speaks to like you not being able to like know it's like, hey, is it Curry or Harris? I'm not sure. Like that's a good thing. Not being yeah. sure which one of those guys sits in and both and both of them ended up sitting in different iterations. That's good, right? Because like that means there's a functionality between this team that can, when it's all healthy, we can mix and match things in a way that maybe the Nets couldn't before. Yeah, and it's interesting because so what I wonder is, and then we'll, we'll want to talk about because the one thing, a couple of things that I did look at was just the idea of, of Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving on and off because I was just curious about that. And that isn't going to yeah, impact five-man rotations and things like that because you know they're going to be a part of them. But about, in this one specifically, to, to cap off this initial five-man lineup, I, my curiosity, really, when you look at it, then understanding the way Ben was early in the season is, is it the Joe Harris size that ends up creating that value? Because you talked about the defensive rating being so strong there, which means, 
you know, like we talked about. Well, can I throw in one other thing just yeah. before you go too far on this? Because, um, like it, it does it. I, I did skip one other. Well, you know, what? I'll get to this in one second because I, I know I cut you off, but I want I think you're going to make a point that I'm going to maybe disprove here in one second. Oh, there was one other five man group that I did leave off of this that's jammed in between the two that I just mentioned. Um, and so with a slightly higher minutes, um, but not all, quite up to the full sample size. So I do want to get to that because uh, I think it's maybe going to maybe unlock some of the questions you have here. First, we all know how ExpressVPN pre protects your privacy and security online. But here's something you might not know about ExpressVPN. You can use it to unlock movies and shows that are only available in other countries. Folks, this is the future of streaming. Don't just get bogged down in what's available here in the U.S. Oh, no, there's so many more options there across the pond than other places. ExpressVPN allows you to binge The Office on UK Netflix. It's just simple to do. You just sign into Netflix, fire up that Express VPN app, change the location, refresh, refresh Netflix, and that's it. You can control what sites you want, uh, where you want sites to think you're located. You can choose from almost 100 different countries. So just imagine all the Netflix libraries you can go to. If you love different dramas like Korean dramas like Parasite, you just go to South Korea. That's where they're going to think you are. It's just that easy. It works with any streaming service, Hulu, BBC, YouTube, you name it. There's hundreds of VPNs out there. The reason we use ExpressVPN to watch shows is because it's ridiculously fast. You're not going to get lagged and bog bogged down with some of these other services. ExpressVPN has figured it all out. If you want access to hundreds of new shows, go to expressvpn.com slash locked on right now. You can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. That's expressvpn.com slash locked on expressvpn.com slash locked on to learn more. And of course, it's the holiday season, friends. And you know, you get together with family, maybe get together with some people ahead of the holidays before you have to get together with those family members. You're hanging out with your friends, you're throwing back a few drinks, and a few drinks becomes too many. As the evening comes to an end and people start to head out, you think of calling for a ride, but no, 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 no. You live nearby. You can make it home okay. And what are the odds that you get pulled over? And even so, what's the worst that could happen? Your insurance goes up a little bit. You lose your license. You lose your job. You lose your car. You total your car. Or maybe even worst case scenario, you actually injure someone else because you're not being responsible when it comes to having drinks, especially around the holiday season. Everybody knows about the risk of driving drunk and the results can be tragic and deadly for you or for someone else that you care about or don't even know. That's why police officers are out right now looking for impaired drivers on the roads to save lives. This always comes down to the sentiment that everyone should take into their hearts around this time of year and frankly, every single day of the year when you're out. The odds that you get pulled over might be low, but once it happens, you know what could come next for you. Long-term problems, long-term issues, and maybe something even more severe. So drive sober or get pulled over. Friends, as we turn our attention back into the Brooklyn Nets and these five-man lineups. So I was curious about it because we had talked about at the start of the year. I'll tee up on this around we've seen Joe Harris and we say the value of the team being able to play a little bit bigger, have a little bit more length. And mostly just trying to give Joe a pat on the back of, hey, he's bigger. He's staying in front of some of these assignments, but we know there's really difficult matchups. So what dispels the idea that he's the contributing factor of just being bigger there with Royce and KD and Claxton in that lineup? Oh, sorry. You know what? I think I misunderstood what you said. And then oh. I'm going to actually help prove your point more than uh, more than anything else here. Because I thought you said, um, is it Harris? That's the linchpin. Harris actually is. The only other guy, except for uh, Durant, oh no, I guess Royce is in all these two. That's in all three of these lineups because the third, the second best lineup, and this one is at 44 minutes, is Durant, Irving, Harris, O'Neal, and Simmons, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like switching. And it's, at that point, it's basically just switching out Simmons and Claxton uh, with that original group that I had said. Another good sign. Now, not a, maybe a great sign that we don't have any Simmons and Claxton lineups in here because we talked about where, you know, having to maybe play the both of those guys together at times those guys combined still is not totally probably where you want to be but Harris is in all three of those groups and you can switch around like sort of who the functional bigs are essentially and as long as he's in there which is really interesting too if you think about his early season shooting struggles too that if you if you you know we wanted to back out the Simmons early struggles as part of maybe why he wouldn't show up in some of these lineups well, we didn't do the same for Harris, except they don't need to because he's in all three combinations that end up being the best five-man lineups, which, again, if you went back two weeks where people – I mean, us, too, were like, is, is he all right here? Like, is he, are the legs coming back? Like, uh, this is a really weird spot to be with Harris. He ends up 
it doesn't kind of matter. It's like, hey, switch around some of the other guys, keep him and keep Royce in there for some defensive stuff. And all of a sudden you're looking at really, really strong lineups. So there's something else here, and, and we can push this in another direction depending on where some of the numbers are that you have. But when I was writing down five-man lineups and then thinking about four-man lineups too, I said in, in the third segment, I want to touch on Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving on-off specifically and just a question that I want to pose back to you, which the numbers may clarify for me. But inside of a four-man lineup, and this is where it's weird. Now I feel like I'm going to go wrong the other way. In the five-man, I put Curry in there. But then I thought about a four-man lineup where I, I wanted to know, understanding, we understand the high defensive value that Claxton has had, and I already know, I test and a little bit of numbers, that Kevin Durant and Claxton have been really good together. Claxton, Durant, Curry, and O'Neal as a four-man base lineup, and then you're dropping in whoever that fifth player may be. Did you have, do you have, or did you have those numbers up? Claxton, because would you say it? I didn't, you know, Claxton, Durant, Curry, O'Neal. I have Claxton, Harris, O'Neal, Cla uh, Durant. Um, I can do that real quick. Yeah, but, with uh, the Curry, yeah, Curry for Harris. And then again, this is kind of the thing we're talking about right now is putting that one, that, 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 that one piece in there. And I, I'm trying to clarify the, the size. Okay, so one problem boundaries. with Curry, one problem with Curry is there's no combination. I'm seeing what the problem is. There's no combination with Curry that has him enough over the 100 minute threshold on a four man lineup. Okay. So that's that's going to be one problem. I will say more often if you look at four man lineups, um Claxton is featured in almost all of the top ones, right? right. So like and remember Having four him man be a part of that is always important. And, and just the way just like so just from some housekeeping piece here, four man and five man lineups, like your best four man lineups are going to be variations of the best five man lineup. And it right. might be just like one guy switch. Cause it's like, Oh, this was this five man lineup. Here's these four guys together. And it's these four guys together. If they played a little bit more. So like you are going to get variations around the same thing. Curry um, just with the injuries and stuff. And maybe just with how the team has rolled just over the course of the season, he's not, uh, he's not in enough uh, variations. Give me the names real quick. I'll, I'll get this while you ask the next question, but I'll, and I'll get the Curry piece. Um, it was, it was Curry. What was it for? Can be Claxton, uh, O'Neal and Curry. Gotcha. Okay. So then, yeah, um, as you pull that up there, because then I think, because what becomes interesting to me, and by the way, even Curry for, for that fact, remember early in the season, we, everyone was hyper-focused on Joe Harris a lot. And then what was going on with Ben Simmons. And we kind of forget that early in the season, there was a time when Seth Curry was saying, yeah, you know, the ankle just not quite there trying to get comfortable with it. And that was alarming to start the season because we all assumed out of the two of them that Seth Curry was the guy, ah, yeah, unfortunately had to deal with a nagging injury last year, but he'll be fine, ready to roll. And he actually had that linger for a little ways. And you, you do start to think about the trickle-down effect of when your perimeter shooters aren't as strong as they as they should be or as, as strong as they typically are. Well, now all of a sudden you're scrambling a little bit to find combinations that are going to work around Kevin Durant, around Kyrie Irving when he's there, and then struggling Ben Simmons as well. Um, there's one guy that I'm not mentioning in this and I, I want to, I do want to get a sample size if it exists, but go ahead. I got, no, I got it. Um, so by the way, we're using the, some of these stats are coming from PVP stats.com. Great site. If you want to use it, some of them are just from stats.mba.com, which makes it super easy to filter for all the different, you know, things you want to be able to do. So both those sites get you a really, not all the way there in this stuff, but really, really close to being, having like just sort of like higher level analytical data around, you know, larger sample size or smaller sample sizes. And once you start fiddling around with it, it really can uh, parse it a lot of different ways. That four man lineup that you said of Durant, Claxton, Curry, O'Neal has only played 56 minutes together this season, although it's been bonkers how good they've been. It's a uh, 132.4 uh, net uh, offensive rating and 103.7 defensive rating for a 28. Point, baby. 28 yeah, it's a 28.6 uh, overall rating. So that lineup um is has just gone absolutely bonkers i guess it doesn't fit it didn't fit into this five man oh maybe, maybe whatever that four man one whenever you throw in when you make the different combinations of the other guys maybe it doesn't get there for the five man so anyway so, so sometimes when you're dealing at this early in the season with the amount of turnover the nets have had in their lineup you are going to get some of this wonkiness around the minutes because things just won't i just told you they had 301 five man lineups of like the right. most in the league right so like sometimes you're just going to get these random combinations of a guy coming in or a guy coming out that's going to throttle that five man up and down a little bit. But in the aggregate, like that four man group is as good. And, and by the way, like this makes total sense, right? Think about these players. Like if you just, if you just were building lineups in a lab, right. And you were like, plus, well, first of all, whenever you have Kevin Durant, it's like, okay, good. We're already one. We're already 10 steps ahead of most Strong other start. things. Right. And then we throw a couple shooters and guys who aren't total turnstiles on defense, like Royce, um and, and guys like this and, and obviously Claxton who's like an, an excellent excellent defender 
all, all of a sudden, yeah, like it makes sense that these lineups would be good, <laughs> right? Because like if you were building random basketball lineups in your head, this one would make a lot of sense. Yeah. And so coming up here in a second, I want to give, I did look up just two man combinations, a stat that may uh, alarm you and explain why Seth Curry was not inside of the best five man lineup and pose a question back to Doug. All right, can we stop the pod for a second? Once we're paused, I got to tell you about Built Bar's new reimagined flavors. We've been on this for years with the flavors over at Built Bar. And the great thing is, Built Bar, they don't want to stop. They're not slowing down over here with the flavors. You think when we used to roll through the 500 flavors that they have, they were all amazing. They would stop there. No, now they got cookie dough topper. Oh, my goodness. Co a coconut brownie bar coconut brownie topper they got white chocolate peppermint granola it's built to take on the granola bar so it's more filling and still insanely tasty the candy cane brownie puff uh the built puffs are just like biting into the universe's most delicious cloud first off for anyone who hasn't tried built bars before they're literally the best tasting protein bars ever from built and we can attest to that because they send us the good stuff the re-ups and you know the family over at the Armbrecht and Nori houses are running for these things once they come in through the door. 100% real chocolate, 17 grams of protein, shockingly low sugar and calories. That's just 130 calories. Once you sink your teeth in, you're going to be changed. You go right now uh, to built.com. You're going to get 15% off your order. You have to use the promo code locked on 15. That's built.com. Get 15% off your order with locked on 15 at built.com. Okay, so um, just quickly, the one player I didn't mention inside of any of this was Yuta Watanabe, and it's mostly because I don't uh, – not, you, maybe you saw this inside of the five-man or four-mans. that I just didn't think that his numbers were ever going to be high enough given when Kyrie Irving wasn't there and then when Yuta, uh, Yuta Watanabe hasn't been there. So I shied away from him, and then the he other guy – has, He just hasn't played – like, remember, too, like, as much as we've loved Watanabe – sorry to cut you off, but just no. one more thing about him. Like, as much as we've loved Watanabe, like – he still hasn't played tons of minutes. Like he's played fewer than 300 minutes the whole season. Now the 300 minutes he's played have been super high profile, just jamming threes, you know, getting excited, doing the Utiflex. Like it's been awesome when it's happened, but it's not shocking to me that he wouldn't be there. He really hasn't played that much. It's just been that his minutes have been so amazing <laughs> when he actually has played uh, that I think, it, it, does that make sense? Like, I think that yeah. like it probably can be thrown off a little bit. It's like, yeah, the guy's like a, was like a total end of the bench guy and was hurt for a while. So anyway, sorry to cut you off, but I just want to say like why he might not show up. No, a hundred percent. Now what was interesting too was, or what I'd be in, I want to get to a question for you before I do. Did you have the, you know, you would never mind. You wouldn't. Cause I actually, ah, I realized the minutes are gonna be way too low on that. So that doesn't matter. Let's move past that. The question I want to ask you then, which is about Kyrie Irving. Cause here's the two man things that I looked up around him that I thought were interesting and maybe something that we can think about going forward for this team. The first one was um, with Katie on Kyrie off. It's a mm -hmm. net four for Kevin Durant. The Kyrie solo minutes are actually six and a half. It's one of the yep. better ratings by himself. But what's interesting is that when they're both on the floor together, they are a 0.71. They are narrowly a positive net rating together. And I need not tell you that when they're both off the court, the team is a minus 8.37. Like that's an obvious one. But it's interesting that them by themselves – function seem to at least by the numbers function better than when they are playing with one another now there's obviously factors around who else is on the court with them and what that means but do you think that there's something to those numbers that it might be easier to form better supporting cast around them individually than what gets diminished when you have them on the court together at times and i know I think your default answer is going to be you always want your best players on the court together. As much okay, as no, well, that, that would be my default, but I have a number that's going to default right back to like um, helping out with maybe saying, you know, disproving a, a, fault, a possible false narrative around these guys, right? Yeah. So th this could be a function of two other things. One, that's this year's numbers. We know that the beginning of the year was real rough, right? And right. so, like, just with the Simmons and Claxon thing was rough. Like, all those combinations look pretty bad from the early early part of the season. Then Kyrie out, Kyrie sits out a bunch, right? So we don't get a, we don't actually get a good enough sample size. Mm -hmm. um, and then he comes back, and then you might be just dealing with smaller smaller sample stuff. So, like, I, I will say from like the one standpoint, one you always want your best players. Two, we might be like just too early in the season to have a good number. I will say if you go a larger sample size over the last 1600 minutes, which, which is encompasses the last couple of years, right. Mm -hmm. Which is start, now it's going to start to take into account more lineup combinations, all different opponents, like everything. It's going to start to just filter out some of that noise. 
And I actually backed out James Harden here just to make sure that we're not like getting propped up by some Harden minutes, even though they didn't uh, they didn't play a ton together. If you look over that sample size, the numbers are really awesome on offense. It's like 121.3 with KD and Kyrie. And then the defense is not great, 113, but they're still, you know, plus eight net rating. So you're still in, you know, remember the goal of basketball is to score more points than your opponent. You can allow your opponent to score 500. If you score 501, you win the game. So like I get the defense isn't great, but if your offense is going to be so awesome, um, that that's just going to be good enough. So, I mean, again, larger sample size will tell you that this combo does work and maybe we just have too much early season lower minutes wonkiness for right now right is that so i i, I don't well, know i'm of two minds i'm of two minds i would not just write off this combination as not being able to work because of this season because we have a larger sample size that says it clearly does right so now here's here's what's interesting and i'm doing this actually in real time over on pbp so i wanted to look at he's talking about the early struggles of this season so when you put kevin durant kyrie irving and ben simmons together they have 266 minutes together it's a plus 4.78 120 offensive 116 defensive you expect the defense to be a little bit higher with what maybe you're losing quote unquote losing with Kyrie Irving. Um, what's interesting about it though, is you can compare that then to the no Kevin Durant or Ben Simmons and just Kyrie Irving minutes, which is 111 minutes. It's not an insignificant sample size. That rating is a net 20. So like, th so these are, again, I agree. Uh, I'm proving kind of both sides of it, right? One that those three guys together, even with the early struggles of the season, still had a net positive rating while Ben Simmons was having a horrible time. So that's a positive thing when you think about Kevin Durant and Kyrie and then this combination of the three of them together. The other side of it is, again, that Kyrie Irving, who is offensively somewhat foolproof when it comes to combinations you want to put around him because he can attack at the basket so much, it did make that combination um, intriguing to me about what you could build around him. And I'll supplement it with this just to get your feedback on it. The other one that I put there together, just in two-man combinations, which is not big, obviously, because Warren has just gotten back onto the court. But I found it really interesting that when you look at Kyrie Irving and TJ Warren for those stack combinations, the best net rating that you're going to find with those two on the court, 15 net rating of plus 15 over just 61 minutes. But it's interesting to think about what that looks like because TJ Warren is a little bit longer, a little bit bigger, can score on ball. And this, I think, kind of goes to just whether it's Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, any combination of it, getting from starting unit and then rotating in players off the bench. The Nets now have two, three, four supplemental offensive weapons that afford you to play with Kyrie or Kevin Durant differently with a Ben Simmons, with a Nicholas Claxton. This is that, can we get Claxton and Simmons off the court together at times? This is how you do it when you have another scorer that can support Kyrie Irving in a, you know, a different version of the lineup. And this just goes back to the original thing, which was this is a good sign for the Nets. It's a good sign yes. that the team is playing, starting to play well, and that there's different combos that are getting it to go there. Like, and like, because that's the that's that's the thing where forever was the problem with the Nets is like, hey, if you take one of these guys off the court, we might as well turn the television off. Like, I it just and just go, you know, find a different team to root for because it was so tough. Like they. I were dying for anybody at the end of last year in the playoffs to do anything. Right? They had two guys, and then they had. X number, all the rest of guys who did nothing like they, either they were hurt. I mean, like, you know, they weren't playing or they just were totally overmatched. And like, yeah. it was just, it was just, a, it was just a total mess. And this season, knowing that th frankly, this season that we can't just name it right off the bat and be a hundred percent out of the gate is good. Is good when the team is good, right? Like when the team is like looking good and you can't pick out your favorite five man group or four man group, or you can make, oh, sorry, you can make cases for lots of different ones. That's a great sign. It's a great sign for the team in terms of functionality. I'm, I'm going to throw the, 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 my, my favorite five man here before we get out the door go ahead and then we'll get Okay. Out. No, I just wanted to give one more final, final takeaway on the two man front. Since I was looking at those, everyone worries about, and understandably the Ben Simmons, Nicholas Claxton combination. When you go over and look at them on off together and separate, guess what? When Claxton is on the court and Ben is off, he has the best net rating out of these combinations at plus six and a half. And he's been great. As Doug said, in almost every lineup, you want to have Claxton be a part of them. What is nice to note, though, is with the both of them off the court, they're negative 1.62. With Simmons on Claxton off, it's a really big negative. We know Simmons is still working. When they're on the court together, they're narrowly a net positive, and which is amazing. The, which is amazing after the beginning of the year. Like now, and that and that's what's interesting. Now, the, now the the offense is 118, the defense is 117. So you're you're shocked by the fact that the defensive number isn't stronger. I think that that can improve with bigger sample size. But the bottom line is. 
you can function with these guys. And I think the perception is that, oh, it's such a disaster. You can get away with it. And, and theoretically, as Ben gets better offensively, that actually can move these numbers in a stronger direction. So a good footnote. But um, what is your other best five? Okay, I have 28 minutes. Here we go. Uh, 8.5 <laughs> net rating, 129 offensive rating. You ready for this? You ready for this all-star group before we get out of here? Yeah. Edmund Sumner, Cam Thomas, Kessler Edwards, <laughs> David Duke Jr., Dayron Sharp. Oh baby, good luck, rest of the league. If we're if, Nets are just you know Nets are just kind of hiding their best one of their best lineups right now, all the way all the way at the end of the bench and partially in the G League. Like we can just um, trade Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and Ben Simmons right now. What are we even doing? Oh my god, just run this group. Yeah, this is like all the Pacers game. It's awesome. This is why this is why sample sizes are amazing, folks, because it only takes a little bit to look really really amazing. Okay, we are gonna get out of here. We will be back again. We'll talk a little trade stuff as guys uh, became trade uh, eligible. Uh, this week on December 15th for dudes that had signed in the off season, still a bunch of players that are not eligible for trades. But as we get kind of into the official part of the trade season, we'll start looking just on a high level. I'll allow what we did with John Collins the other day about what the nets can do. Please do not text me, email me, or uh, put any YouTube comment about Mo Bamba. That name is about to be blocked. Um, but uh, never that give guy's his number, Doug. Never that, give guy's, his number. that guy's turned into Miles Turner 6.0 if That's for right. some Nets fans. <laughs> it's like they just hear Mo Bamba and they're like, guys, second coming of Will Chamberlain. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, make sure you subscribe to Allah, uh, our said uh, YouTube <laughs> channel where we're trying to get to 4,000 followers uh, before the new year. I think we're almost definitely going to get there, but you can be part of that push. So go and subscribe to Locked on Nets YouTube. The best teams have chemistry. They communicate with each other and they sacrifice personal glory for a common goal. Why, that's Dave DeBoucher. Oh, one of the all-time great, but RIP, yeah, I can't remember. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow talking more Brooklyn Nets basketball.